Welcome to another solder time with Ian. Today I'm going to solder two CPLD breakout boards. Uh, one is the next version of the Xilinx 9572 XL. We forgot to break out a pin on the original. I've got it here to refer to. And then the other is a new one. This is for the Lattice LC4032, which is the low-end Lattice CPLD chip. Also have one for the Altera Max 3000, but I don't have a chip for it. The Altera rep once promised to send us some freebie dev boards and also some chip samples, but we never heard back from them again. So this one remains unpopulated. I need to pick those up when I order from DigiKey. Tomorrow, we're probably going to solder this through-hole version of the IR Shield for the Arduino. This is something we've been cooking up for a while. I'll be using again my Flux Freebie from Farnell. Try it out again before I write a review for the blog. These are both pretty simple boards and the parts are more or less the same so it made sense to solder them together. These are the finished boards, the lattice board and the xilinx board. The lattice board we're not set up to test yet, but we can put in the demo into the xilinx board and test it right away. So meet me over at the workbench and we'll test it out there. The first thing we do is a power up test using the bus pirate. We have the bus pirate's 3.3 volt supply connected to the CPLD board's 3.3 volt supply and we've got a header over the voltage select for the I.O. pins of the CPLD. Now we'll power up the bus pirate and we'll use the software controlled power supplies to test the CPLD board. And if there's a short here, if the power doesn't come up for some reason, then the bus pirate will detect that and turn off the supply right away so nothing bad happens to the board. And I just hit capital W and you'll see the voltage regulator LED come on. If it goes off right away, it means there's a problem. Nope, everything looks okay, and I'll get a voltage report. Everything looks good. Now the next thing we'll do is use a second bus pirate programmed with the XSVF player firmware, and we'll use that to program the CPLD board with the test program that blinks the LEDs when you push the button. Now the bus pirate's connected to the CPLD breakout board. The bus pirate's powering the CPLD board with 3.3 volts. We've also got the JTAG connection from the CPLD board connected to the Bus Pirate. Now remember the Bus Pirate has a special XSFV player firmware programmed into it. We couldn't fit this in the normal firmware, so we made a separate firmware that you just program in using the normal bootloader procedure. Now I'll switch over to the screen, and we're going to use a little DOS program to program in the test into the CPLD. Okay, now the program's loaded up and we'll just hit space to continue. The program sends the firmware in chunks of, I believe, yeah, 4,000 bytes. The bus pirate stores it in a buffer and then pushes it out through the JTAG player into the CPLD. So far everything's good. Those are blank sections so they go faster. And we got a success code. The factory test for the CPLD breakout board just toggles this LED when the button is pressed. That tests the LEDs, the button, the pull-up resistor on the button, as well as the CPLD itself and the power supply. So when we press it, it should toggle like that. Perfect. The build was a success and this revision will go into production the next time we make CPLD breakout boards.